You're going to come to the table to be part of the group, if you don't mind. There you go. If you, if you want to, you can, you can, you're fine right there. You're fine right there. Right here? Yes, sir, you're fine. Thank you. Um, thank you. Amen. It's nice to be in the meeting. Oh, absolutely. Glad to have you, sir. Glad to be here. Amen. Let us, uh, let us begin by prayer. And um, that's always a good thing, sir. Would you sure. be so kind of pray? Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. I pray that you would help your servant to minister your word and be pleasing unto you. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you. We're glad to have each and every one of you here. Let's go around the room and uh, introduce ourselves. We'll start with this gentleman here. We're glad to have you. Herman Morgan is my name. God bless you, Mr. Morgan. God bless yes. you as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Everybody's here. Cindy. Yes. Cindy. Hi, Vicki. God bless you. We welcome you. Thank you. Yes. April. Yeah, okay. Ooh, Catherine. Okay. I'm Reverend Woods and... Anthony, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're so happy to be here at Pleasant, uh, <laughs> here here at the High Rise, and, and um, other other people's. Amen. Homes, other people. That's okay. We believe in God to really make a difference in this community up here. Yeah. Yes. As as you guys know, our um, church is down in the bottoms. I bought some materials for anyone that would like to uh, know more about the church. I thought that would be, if, you know, because sometimes people. I like to join. Amen. That's I have plenty of material there. You can ask me whatever questions you want to ask me, talk to me, whatever. I'll be happy to speak with you, and uh, I just want to be a blessing. So I really, and I really mean that. I'm not just saying that. But tonight, um, let me teach. Um, I've been endeavoring to to share something from the Gospels to. Uh, mainly the teachings of Jesus because as Christians the word Christian means Christ like and mm -hmm. so when we come to God our main objective outside of going to heaven is to be like Jesus yes. it's to be like Jesus we want to get better we want to change we want to get we want to do things better do things better today than we did yesterday do things better this week than we did last week and on and on and on and if we do that and if we follow that Somewhere along the line, we're going to get better. You know, yeah. if you make that, I'm going to be better today yeah, than I was. Just said I'm going to. You better believe it. And and we've been taught that all our lives growing up, you know, especially if you grew up in church, if he take one step, if I take one step, he'll take two. Mm -hmm. And and we don't really stop to analyze that. If, 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 if somebody, if you're coming toward me, right, yes. it, imagine you as God, mm -hmm. and I'm a person in need. And, and I said, okay, I'm going to take one step towards you because I know that you have everything I need, right? So as I take one step towards you, you're going to take two steps toward me. That means that you're going to get to me faster. But as long as we both keep coming, yeah, as, but see, the problem is we don't keep coming. <laughs> we'll take one or two steps we'll and, get, and get distracted. Yeah, we'll, stop. we'll take one or two steps and say, uh, I know if I if I do this, I'm gonna to have to do this. I'm gonna to have to. Do this. We're putting the cart before the horse yes. because the enemy don't want you to change. He wants you to think about the things you need to do to change. He doesn't want you to see the benefits of change. And I remember after I prayed for salvation, after I prayed for salvation, when I began to look back, I was like, "What was I holding on to? Why why was I even wrestling with this? This is ridiculous." I should have done this a long, I can't tell you how many people have that testimony. Why did I wait? Why did I make God wait? What, what was I holding on to? It makes no sense until after the fact. But while you're in the middle of it, you're distracted, you're blinded, you're confused, you're, you, you name it. And so therefore, the devil has the advantage. We, you took, know. Um, we took our eyesight off of, off of God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we just deal with the here and now. Yeah. And not what's later to come, because the fact of it is, even though in the midst of a storm, and, and like he, like he did Noah, when, when the storm came up, he called the waters and the seas. And, 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 and that too shows that everything that happens is for a reason, not for just for the season. Mm -hmm. You know, it happens.
us because of the fact that there's we lose sight on our faith and our and our, and our blessings. Yes. Because in the storm it blows away. But when we hold on, things will be better. They will be. And uh, so let me get this lesson taught. Because man, we could all sit here and because <laughs> we all have perspective. We all, you know what? I don't care what our situation is. I believe everybody can speak on God. I really do. I, I, really, I really do. I don't care if you are a rock gut sinner. There are moments in times when God is on your mind. Yes. And you have had experiences in the midst of whatever it is you're doing to where God deals with you or you had moments of reflection. And this, we could all speak on that. Really, we all could. But it's that putting that consistency. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, let's talk about the mustard seed tonight. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's talk about that. Um, Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. And it's just uh, two verses, which is amazing. Uh, Matthew 13, and I'll read it. Uh, verse 30, if you have your Bible, if you, do, if you want to have your devices or what have you. Uh, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like unto it, a grain of mustard seed, mm -hmm. which a man took and sowed in his field, and which indeed is the least of, of all seeds. But when it is what grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree. So this smallest seed, when it's grown, when it's mature, become the greatest herb and become of the tree, so that the birds of the air cometh and lodge, or come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now, what can we learn? What can we benefit from a mustard seed? What, what, what can we get out of a, one of the smallest? Now, if you really look at it, Biblically, this is saying this is, and it may have been in the Middle East at this time. Even though the mustard seed is not the smallest seed, it is one of the smallest seeds, okay? It is one of the smallest seeds. But it illustrates a parable, a parable that is synonymous with heaven. God took a seed, a minuscule, small, minute seed, and said, this is like heaven. Uh, I, this, is, this is like planting heaven inside of you and growing. Okay? Now, what is a parable? We've all heard, oh, Jesus taught parables. Jesus preached about parables. Or, Dude, I went to church and the preacher used this parable. And man, it, it was wonderful. Well, what, what, what is a parable? And, what, and how did it impact your life? And so a parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. It is used to teach you a lesson of morality. And God knows we can all use some morality. <laughs> I don't care how long we've been saved. I don't care how long you have not been saved. Morality, we need morals. Absolutely. Amen. We must have ethics, good behavior, uh, conduct ourselves uh, in a way that's proper and correct. Amen. There's enough wrongdoing in this world 20 times over. Amen. But it takes a person who has morals, who have character, who make up their minds that, you know what, I don't care how much I'm tempted, I am going to do the right thing. You know, that takes work. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It takes strength. It takes strength to do what? The right thing. This parable is a representation of the progress of the gospel message when it is planted. Okay? When it is planted, when you hear the gospel message, Jesus Christ dying on the cross for your sins, shedding his blood, being whipped with the cat of nine tails, which is what happened when a person was crucified back then. They took a, a whip and put pieces of sharp bones and metal particles on the end of it. And 39 times the Bible says, well, 39 times saved one 
What was that? That's no. Okay, all right. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> It's not the first time we've heard a, a notification, <laughs> and I promise you it won't be the last. Okay. Uh, so, um, anyway, he was beaten 39 times with that whip, save one. And when they were done with him, when you read the Bible, the Old Testament, speaking of the uh, prophecy of what Jesus would look like, said that his visage was marred more than any other man. That means literally when they finished with Jesus, he was beaten beyond recognition for you and I. He was not this picture you see. You know You know. the other day you asked me? Yes. I'm getting ready to answer your question. No, that is not Jesus. When Jesus was on the cross, he was beaten beyond recognition. You could not determine his person. That's how bad it was. For you and I, why? Because sin is so ugly. Sin is so tragic. He had to suffer in our place. Okay? So that is why it's so critical that we come to God. That is why it's so critical that we come to the foot of the cross where he suffered, where he died, and where he, and where he paid the price for you and I. Because all the things that we do that's not right, he's already paid the price for it. He's already paid the price for it. That's why we need to be forgiven. And that's why we need to come to him. And so, what um, the mustard seed, let me tell you a little bit about the mustard seed. I printed this out. I have a lot of material. I may not get to it all. But hopefully you will get the gist of this. Amen. As God continues to as God continues to bless this community, bless this building, and even now as I speak, I pray that God will go on every floor. I pray that God will go in every apartment. I pray that God will touch every life, Amen. every soul. Yes. And God, and I just pray that some way, somehow, that their lives can be impacted in the right way. Yes. Now, what is a, a mustard seed is used when it grows it is used as a spice. You grind it and mix the seeds with water and vinegar or other liquids, and it creates a yellow condiment known as a prepared mustard, right? <laughs> Did you not know also that the seeds can be pressed to make mustard oil? And then, of course, as some of you who have grown up down south or who may know a little bit about southern food, the leaves from it can be eaten mustard, mustard greens. Mustard. <laughs> yeah, no, indeed. No. Yeah, man. <laughs> now we now we in here. Now we talk. And um, and some other things that you might not know about mustard seeds. Mustard seeds are also good for your bones, as they are packed with a mineral called selenium which makes your bones stronger. So go to your refrigerator and just start eating mustard. You know what I mean? No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm oh, just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm just having a good time. A little bit of water. Yeah, a little bit of water. Yeah, make a hot dog. A Frank from New York and just put mustard on it. That's good. Many people. I prefer ketchup personally, but, you know, it's okay. I, I'm not against it. You use it for your uh, when you make when you make potato salad. It, oh yeah, yeah, people do put it in potato salad. It, it does you dress it, it up. It, it, nice it does. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let me share some some more with you. They also say that mustard seeds help strengthen your nails, your hair, and teeth. So maybe we can brush with it. I don't know. Mustard seeds contain an antioxidant and the anti-inflammatory properties that help in relieving pain in your gums, bones, and teeth. So it's pretty, it's just some little extra stuff to, to, you know, to add to the Bible study. Go ahead on with your job. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, you're going to teach on this stuff. So... 
So yeah. we see that what I want to share with you tonight is that the mustard seed, the, the concepts or the, the precepts or whatever it is you want to call it, that we want to benefit from it is, is likened to <coughs> the kingdom of heaven. It's one of the smallest seeds. When it grows, it grows to the point to where it's big enough for birds and and everything to, to rest on it and land on it and be used, okay? So that is the concept. So what I want to do is I want to tell you six things. I want to talk to you six things, about six things, that the mustard seed, when it is planted, when the seed of God is planted, just like the mustard seed is planted, it grows and blah, blah, blah. Uh, when the seed of God is planted, in your heart, right? Um, is everything okay? Oh, yeah. You're right. We're, we're all right. When you plant a seed, you have to care about it, right? You can't just put it out there. When you plant a seed, do you just leave it out there? It's the same way with God. When you've heard the gospel message and when you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You have to care about it. Uh -oh. Yeah. Okay. We don't want nothing. We gave him last week. <laughs> One way or another, I'm going to keep it. Um, but, um, the first thing that we have to, we have to care. Once God comes into your life, you have to care about it. All right? Yes. It's not going to just happen. Amen? So, uh, caring is what? A choice. It's a choice. So, you accept the gospel message, but at the time that you accept the gospel message, it's the smallest point in your life. Because what? It has to grow. You, you have to grow. The Bible said grow in grace. and then the So, Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this one thing, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So once the seed is planted, it needs to grow, but you have to care. It's not going to happen on its own. When you know you should read your Bible, when you know you should be praying, when you know you need to go to church, when you know you need to do the spiritual things, because that's what benefits the seed. Right? But those are the things we don't want to do. Because if we do that, that means we have to change. Right? And change is not change until we change it. All right? All right. Zechariah 4 and 10 tells us, For who hath despised the day of small things? So you just so you just accepted Jesus Christ, or so a man or woman just it's okay. It might be the beginning. But you have to care for it to grow, right? You have to care about it. You have to care about it. So when that mustard seed is planted, that farmer has to care about it, all right? Number two, you have to make a commitment. It takes commitment to serve God. It takes commitment to grow things, don't it? You have to be committed to it. Well, I'm going to grow some to My Matter of fact, my neighbor grew a garden when I came home. I put the garbage cans up. He hollered over the hedges. Do you guys like zucchini? <laughs> I said, what did you do to keep them critters out of there? I put a fence up, but one of them still tried to get in. Wow. He gave me a couple of huge zucchinis, mm. but he grew them in his garden. But my wife and I saw him go back there with that uh, uh, machine and break that ground up. He was on his hands and knees working that garden and put it together. And now his garden is beautiful. Yes. But it took commitment. What is commitment? Dedication of time and effort. If you really want God to grow in your life like this mustard seed, it takes dedication of time and effort, right? Yes, you need to give God his, the time, but you got to put the work in too, right? And if you think serving God is not work, you, you, you got another thing coming. <laughs> you got another thing. If it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. Right? right? With no problems and no trouble. But it is work, so I'm not going to sit here 
and try to make it sound like, oh, just give your heart to Jesus. And Kool-Aid will come out the water fountain. Everybody's going to treat you right. And you're always going to have food on the table. And you're always going to have gas in the car. And all the bills are going. And they can be. A lot, but I'm just saying, there are lessons to be learned. There are there, There's growth to be had. There's things God has to teach us because the seed has to be taken care of. Right? That is planted. It takes dedication. Revelation 14 and 12 says, Herein, or here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You must keep the commandments. They must mean something to you. You must be committed to God. The third thing is that they must, when you plant something, it must be water. Right? It must be water. Yes, you have to care about it. Yes, you have to be committed and dedicated to it. But you, you have to water it, too. You have to water it, right? <laughs> Things planted need water. Water does what? Sustain life. Your body is how much water? 90%. Something like that. Three quarters. Don't drink water. Now, you can go without food for a while. But you need water. Mm -hmm. You need water. That's true. You need water. Right. And um, you must water the seed of God that's planted as the mustard seed is. Look, listen at this. And I want you to really listen to me very carefully. The early church had problems. There were schisms and people was like, I'm from, I'm a Paul. I'm a Apollos. I, I'm, I'm with this one. You know how people do that. I go to this church and my church is is all this and a bag of chips. And every, you know, everybody thinks their church is right. Paul had that problem. And so listen at this. 1 Corinthians 3 and 6 says, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So what that's saying is when you are under the right ministry, you get watered. You get uh, sometimes when you go to a ministry, you're planted in that ministry, right? God is planted in you, you're planted, and then the ministry waters your life, right? The, the, the services, the prayer meetings, the encouragement of reading your Bible and praying, it, it's all in, involved in watering the seed. The ministry that God, uh, whether it be teaching, pastoring, evangelism, administrative, Whatever uh, a line of ministry uh, helps, whatever, all ministries that God has lined up in the church has an impact upon people's lives. And it helps you, it helps the seed of God in one way or another grow in your life, right? Paul said, uh, it, when he wrote, he said, some water, some plant, but God is the one. Isn't it true a farmer can plant? He can water. He can do all this stuff, but then at some point, he can't make it grow. <laughs> you can have the fanciest equipment you want, and you can have the most expensive seed, and you can go down through that and burr out, and I'm always marveling at how farmers do that. Those, those things are those straight lines, and they plant, and things grow, but if God don't touch it, I don't care what you do. God it's like if, if a surgeon cut, cut you open to do surgery and help you and they do their job, if God don't heal you, then God still got to heal you. We take medicine for things. Let's say if you have a headache and you take medicine. If God don't touch that pill, man, if God don't touch that pill, your headache is going to continue. <laughs> You said, but I took the pill. It's, it still takes the miracle of God, the functioning of your body that comes from God. Think about it. God gives the increase. Number four, sunshine. <laughs> huh? Yes. yes. That photosynthesis. Is <laughs> the oxygen and all this stuff work is beautiful. Right? And even flowers, you think about it, when the sun come up, they open. Right. Oh, God. God, when you, I, I open up when God shines. 
when God, when, when, I, when, I, when, when I read the Bible, I open up. When I get down and pray, I open up. When I go to church, I open up. It's God, the light of the gospel, the Bible tells us, shining in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we need the sunshine. We need the light of God. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. And uh, that's First Corinthians, first, I mean, Colossians 1 and 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is in Christ, the hope of glory. Sunshine. Amen. Let your light so shine. Huh? Also, the light of your brothers and sisters' life shining to you encourages you as iron what? Sharp. Your life is a light. Where does the light come from? God. Let your light so shine before men, right? All right. Let's move along to the last two before I run out of time. One of the problems that happens when you're growing stuff is weeds. <laughs> you can plant, you can water, you can care, you can you have sunshine, you can do all these things. But sometimes, like we, somebody planted some flowers at the church, but they planted them right in the middle of the grass. The grass just grew, was growing up and choking. That's what happened. That's, that's basically what happened. Yes. If you weeds will choke the life out of a plant, mm -hmm. right? Like, and weeds are synonymous. When you read the Bible, weeds are synonymous to the cares of this life. Don't you know? When you're endeavoring to serve God and you start caring about all this stuff and getting caught up in all, it will choke God right out of your life. Boy, I don't know what I'm going to do. And what do you mean you don't know what you're going to do? That's where we go wrong. We try to fix this. We try to fix that. We try to do this. Then he said, cast all your cares upon me. Why? Because I care for you. Don't let the weeds of, of life choke the seed of God out of your life. Because it will. Burdens. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. I will take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I, I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of God. I just do. You know what I mean? I, I just want to acknowledge that. And, I, and the Bible said that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. But right now, I could preach if I wanted to. And uh, I'm sure Reverend Steele could say a word, too. But it's like, man, something happens. Something just, something just starts turning on the inside. But I'm going to have to leave that thing alone. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it, 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 leave that thing alone, man. Yeah. yeah. And last but not least, the mustard seed. You know, we've talked about all these processes. And we've talked about the seed of God. We must feed the seed. You know, farmers fertilize and do all these different things. One of the greatest ways to feed the seed is prayer. Yeah. It's prayer. If you don't pray, you'll never make it to heaven. They used to sing that song, you'll never get to heaven if you break my heart. <laughs> I promise you that you'll never get to heaven if you don't. Prayer is the key that locks the door at night and opens it in the morning. The Bible said in Luke chapter 18, men ought to always pray and not what? Faint. Why? Because the minute we decide we want to pray, we always can come up with a reason why we shouldn't pray. Isn't it? Oh, I, I, I got laundry to do. I, I, I forgot I was supposed to go to the show. <laughs> Oh, I got this article I need to read online and all this junk. Well, and, you know, we got to put God first. Your, yes. your, your soul, your soul is so important. You must put the things of God first. You must feed your soul, right? Men ought to always pray. Make praying a habit. It's the fertilizer. It's the miracle growth of God. You know how they have this miracle... Prayer is the miracle. It, it will it will call it will make you grow like a miracle. Because it is a miracle. And last but not least, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, pray 
without ceasing. Amen. Amen. Lessons from the mustard seed. May God bless you. We're happy to have you. Amen. Remember service uh, tomorrow evening at 7.30, regular church service. Um, tomorrow evening at 7.30, please be much in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these precious people. I thank you for laughs, and I thank you for the moments of seriousness. I just thank you, God, that your presence has been here with us, God, moving about, directing, leading, and guiding. I pray, God, that we can all benefit from what has happened here this evening, and we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Can I ask a question? You said we can ask questions. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>